Hi, I'm Frank Persico. Today I'd like to give you some tips and tricks to help you make your bar chords ring out clearer. A lot of new guitar players and even not so new guitar players have issues and frustration with bar chords. It requires a certain sort of dexterity and a particular kind of hand strength and proper technique in order to pull it off properly and not have clammy notes that don't ring out clearly. I had a student yesterday and she was particularly frustrated and um, I had to drill into her technique and really help her figure out why her bar chords weren't ringing out clearly and I thought some of these tips would help you as well. So the first thing I noticed on this particular student was where her thumb was located, okay? And her thumb was kind of somewhere down here and that's a bad habit that a lot of guitar players have. That thumb either hugs the top and limits your ability to really get a full grasp of the fretboard or more commonly it goes down here because people are feeling they need more strength and they feel like that's going to help. That's not a good place for the thumb to be. Ideally you want to almost keep your hand parallel to the floor and your thumb should really be almost directly behind your index finger. So I'm going to come this way. And if you notice, thumb behind the index finger, okay? As much as proper, as much as possible, which is going to allow me to kind of turn my hand this way, which will get to my next point. Okay, so our thumb is behind the index finger and we're going to play the G major bar chord using the E shape on the third fret, okay? Thumb is pretty much behind, not exactly behind, but pretty much behind our forefinger which kind of lets us squeeze the neck and get more leverage. The other thing that you want to focus on is if your finger is too flat almost, too parallel to the neck, there's going to possibly be space between the bottom of your finger and the fretboard, which is going to leave room for clammy notes. What you want to be able to do is almost use, you're almost kind of using the side of your finger. If you notice, I'm kind of turning my hand. Notice all the rest of my fingers kind of follow with it. So if I was just barring this without the rest of the chord, my other fingers could almost stack up on top of it. And I'm really using almost, if you look at where the dents are, kind of using the side of my finger. See that? It's not the front of my finger. It's almost the side. It's flatter along the side of my finger. So if I'm barring all of the notes and I'm getting some clams, first thing I'm going to kind of do is, see that subtle, that subtle turn of the hand, which is going to get me on this part of the finger, which is flatter. I can even draw a line with my finger now. Maybe you can see where that is, okay? That's tip number two. Roll your finger. Okay? The next tip, very, very important. This goes for any time you're fretting a note on the guitar. You want to stay near the bar. So if I'm at the third fret, I don't want to be down here at the beginning of the fret, near the lower bar, near the lower fret bar. Because no matter what I do, those notes are not going to ring out. Notice what happens as I move closer to the bar at the end of the fret. Wow, see how much clearer that is? So if I were to try to bar it down here, it's not going to sound clear. If I almost roll up to where my finger is almost overlapping the fret, and remember, we're turning this way, so I get the most leverage. I have the side of my finger kind of almost wedged 
bam, you can almost feel it lock in. Now, if I had my hand totally flat, it's harder to do that. But if I have just that little bit of curve, I could lock it in. You almost feel the bar of the fret, okay? It's gonna give you the strongest tone. So practice that just with barring every note. Slide up, feel that finger lock in behind that fret, okay? So then even when you're up here on the smaller frets, you know, this particular student was like concerned. She's like, well, my finger is wider. We were up really up high, which I can't do on this guitar, but my finger itself is wider than the space between the frets. How could you possibly play it? Well, it's because you're not really playing it with the flat part of your finger. You're playing it with that finger is curved. See that? So even if I play a fully fingered bar chord, that little bit of, see that hand, cocked that way, it's going to let us get those notes clear. It's a feel thing. Once you feel what that's supposed to feel like, you'll automatically, your muscle memory and your brain will automatically tell you how to finger that. You won't have that problem anymore, okay? The final thing I want to uh, talk about is Let's say if we're playing a major bar chord, right? I noticed this particular student that there was space between these fingers, between the third finger and the pinky. And in general, that's a bad idea when you're playing chords. Our fingers operate better when we have them kind of locked together, when they're operating as one. Two fingers that are in the same region here can kind of be locked together. This should not be spaced. If I have my third finger and my pinky on two adjacent strings on the same fret, there's no reason for there to be space between them. They should be together. Just like when we learned our cowboy chords in the first position, let's say our E minor chord, however you're fingering it, whatever two fingers are playing it, they're locked together. Same thing with the A minor chord. The second and third finger, they're together. Okay? They look, this, look, if you even take them off the neck, they are together, okay? So when we're playing a bar chord, same thing, okay? Number one, thumb behind index finger, okay? Number two, side of the forefinger. We can roll. If we're getting it, if it's not ringing clearly, kind of roll it, okay? So we get that flat surface. Number three, stay near the bar. Don't be at the beginning of the fret. You are never going to get a good sound down there. It's impossible. Okay? Okay? Practice with just the forefinger. And the final tip, keep our fingers that are working adjacent, keep them locked together. Okay? If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. Check me out on TikTok if you wish. I'm Frank Persico, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Have a good one. Thank you.